good morning good afternoon good evening whatever time it is from whatever time zone you're watching this from we are so glad that you're joining us and we want to say welcome to mavuno church we are a community uh, of faith based out of out of kenya and we are so excited that you're able to join us uh, wherever it is that you're watching us uh, i know and wherever it is that you're following uh, this worship experience from my name is james moshai i'm one of the pastors in the mavuno family i have the privilege of bringing bringing to us God's word this month and we're going through a sermon series called a uh, twist of faith a twist of faith and we're looking at some interactions uh, that Jesus had with uh, a few individuals as recorded in the scriptures and these individuals were faced by impossible situations they were facing impossible situations but they engaged their faith in a way that they were able to obtain some phenomenal outcomes and some phenomenal interventions. And what we are asking is, what can we learn uh, from, these, uh, from these individuals? And is there a way, is it possible for us to engage our faith in a similar way so that it will be possible for us to get even things that appear to be impossible uh, to be addressed for us on account of how we approach the Lord uh, and, and, and on account of how we engage our faith. And today we'll be reading from the book of Mark chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse 21 to verse 36 of Mark chapter 5. Uh, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. It's a bit of a lengthy reading, but I hope you'll be able to, ta uh, you know, to, to come along uh, with me as I read this interesting portion of scripture. This is what it says. Jesus got into the boat again and went back to the other side of the lake where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Then a leader of the local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him, My little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. Jesus went with him and all the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. Verse 26 continues, she had suffered a great deal from many doctors and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, verse 29 tells us, the bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look at the crowd, look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? His disciples said to him, uh, sorry, uh, skipping to verse 32. But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. While he was still speaking to her, messengers arrived from her, from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith. You know, I see several things that we can highlight from this story. And ultimately, this portion of scripture seems to be anchored in suffering. But not just suffering, but suffering and Jesus' response to the suffering that we see in the story. We see a girl who is greatly sick. She's sick enough that her family is persuaded that she is dying. We see a father in the anguish of watching a sick child about to come, you know, you know to, to, to meet an early grave. And we see his pain and his anguish and he falls at Jesus' feet and he cries out, My daughter is dying. We see that Jesus responded immediately to Jairus by starting off on a journey to their home with the intention of intervening. You know, when you skip, you know, uh, towards the end, we've read that some messengers came and they actually said, uh, you know, this girl, the girl has died. Stop disturbing the teacher. It's too late now. But when you skip, uh, you know, further down into the story, we didn't get there. But what you find is Jesus insists on still going uh, to Jairus' home and he raised 
the daughter, Jairus daughter, back to life. And, and, and that's the good news, guys. You know, maybe, by the way, maybe this is your sermon right here, that even when Jesus is late, he is still on time. Maybe that's somebody's word for, uh, you know, as you're watching this, as you're listening to the sound of my voice, maybe this is your sermon. Maybe you've been waiting and waiting and waiting and you've gotten to a place where it's already too late. The opportunity has passed. The chance for God to intervene in your situation has already gone and you can no longer connect with him. Maybe that's your feeling today. But what I want you to understand and what I can see in this story is that even when Jesus seemed to be late for Jairus' daughter, he was still on time because she got her healing. This account seems to be anchored in suffering, but more importantly, it's anchored in Jesus' response to the suffering of the people uh, in the story. And I want us to focus not, not on the little girl, but on this woman. You know, the Bible doesn't give us a name uh, for this woman, and I don't know why. And I want you to allow me to give her a name. I want us to call her Mudeu. I'm recording this from a place called Athi River in Kenya. And this is a name that would be common among the people of the community who live around here. And I want us to look at her life and, and, and see what are the things that we can see. I realized as I considered Mudeu, as I read this story, as I looked at it closely uh, in the three Gospels where it is recorded, I realized that it's possible that you're watching this and as you're watching this, you're watching from a place of suffering. It could be that even as you're hearing about the suffering of this woman, that that's, that's, that's a place you're well acquainted with. Maybe you're following this, you know, with some pain or some sorrow in your life. Maybe with some physical, uh, actual physical pain. Maybe that's what you're experiencing. And I realize that if this is you, if this is where you are, if for some reason or the other, you're in a place of pain and suffering as you listen to this message or as you watch this, I realize that Mudeu would feel you. She would understand you. She would get what you're going through. And I think that because when I read the story closely, these are some things that I can see very clearly as I have been reading. Maybe you know suffering. Maybe you're watching this right in the thick of things. And I really do feel that Mudeo would totally feel you. Maybe you know the suffering of illness. Perhaps even the pain of a long extended illness, a complicated condition that you have had to bear for a long time. That was her experience. And so she probably would have understood you. She probably would get what you're going through. Maybe you've suffered at the hands of others. That's part of the pain you've had to experience in your life. You've experienced oppression, the depths of pain that come from being oppressed by other people. I see that in addition to this woman suffering from a physical illness, the Bible tells us she had suffered a great deal, not from one, but from many doctors. And so she knew the pain, the pain of, 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 of sort of being oppressed or being, you know, treated badly or poorly by other people. She would have understood that if that's the pain that you're well acquainted with. I see that this woman had experienced the pain of lack and poverty. Maybe that's what you're wrestling with right now. The pain of lack, wondering, why am I always struggling? But perhaps it was even deeper, uh, you know, uh, it was an even deeper pain. The pain of lack after having had plenty at some point in the past. And I'll tell you why I'm persuaded this was as a, her experience. Mark tells us that she had spent everything she had to pay them, talking about the doctors. That she had spent everything she has meant that she had had plenty. She had had something to invest in pursuing treatment for her condition. But the Bible tells us she had spent everything. She had had wealth, but it was gone. And so now she's experiencing lack. Now she's experiencing poverty. But it's deeper because she had had plenty at some point in her past. Maybe this is your story as you listen to me. Maybe you've suffered the pain of disappointment. This woman, Mudeu, understood that pain better than most. Mudeu had visited doctors, spent all of her wealth in pursuit of healing. She had been hopeful. She had waited and, and, and desired her healing and done everything she could in pursuit of it. But the Bible actually says that in fact she had gotten worse rather than getting better. Is it disappointment uh, that, that, that you've experienced that breaks you and that just causes you so much pain? Mother would have felt you. Have you ever felt inconsequential? Have you ever felt like nobody sees you have you ever felt like, you know, even maybe ask yourself, do I even exist? No one gets you. No one connects with you. I'm persuaded that this was part of Mudeu's experience. And I'll tell you why. Because the story says that after, after healing power left Jesus, Jesus said, who touched me? 
And the Bible says, you know, they, they, they all said, look, everyone is touching you, there's no one here. And what that tells me is that this woman had squeezed through the crowd. She had moved in, she had touched Jesus, she had moved out, and no one noticed her. No one even saw that she was there. If you know the pain of feeling inconsequential, feeling like you don't matter, feeling like no one even sees you, I believe that Mothe would have understood you because that was her story and that was her experience. You see, our reading today is anchored in deep suffering, but more importantly, it's anchored in Jesus' response for it. And I see that just like for the little girl, in the same way we have this beautiful ending where the little girl, Jairus' daughter, is brought back to life, I see that it ends exactly as you would hope a tragic story would end. Mutheu's story ends with her healing and her condition, her terrible condition, is what the Bible calls it. Uh, is, you know, it comes to an end. And all we can say is glory to God, this God who can intervene even in that situation that seemed impossible. If you're in a place of deep and intense suffering, as you're listening to this, as you're watching this, I want you to know that this word is for you. And I need you to understand that the suffering can come to an end. It did for this woman, it did for Mudeu, it did for this little girl. This story has convinced me, above all, that it is possible for me to have such outstanding faith that it intrudes on, on what God is doing and draws the power of God to translate into an intervention in my situation. That's what happened for Mudeu. I need you to remember the context of this story. It's why I read the entire portion, because I need you to understand Jesus wasn't on siesta. He wasn't napping. He wasn't on vacation. Jesus was on an important, incredibly important mission. It was literally a life and death mission. My daughter is dying. That's how the journey had begun for him. And he had started to walk in the direction of Jairus' home, going to intervene to save a girl who was about to, you know, to, to go through the sad experience of a premature death, the pain of that family. Jesus was on his way to address that reality. Jesus was busy. Jesus was otherwise engaged. But here comes Mudeu with such a magnitude and quality of faith that she intrudes into the plans of Jesus and draws a miracle that translates into a permanent, you know, healing from a condition that had afflicted her for 12 years. Is it possible for us to live our lives with such faith that our faith moves the hand of God in the direction of our seemingly impossible situations? Is it possible for you and me today to live a life of or, you know, intrusive faith, a faith that interrupts what God is you know, pursuing, what he's doing, and, and breaks out, you know, sort of causes his power to break out in our lives and allows him to intervene in our situation with his power to move even the things that seem to be impossible? I see from Mudeu that that's what she had done. She had stretched out her hand. She had touched Jesus' robe and she had received her healing as Jesus was moving on about his business. And I want us to see, you know, we know she got her healing. We know she got her breakthrough. And what I want us to sort of focus on is how did she get there? How does this miracle happen? What is the expression of her faith that made it possible for her to receive this intervention? And I'm going to focus us and draw attention to three verses uh, in Mark chapter 5, verse 27 to verse 29. This is what it says. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Her bleeding stopped immediately. That's what the word tells us Jesus knew that healing power had left him. But this is the thing that you need to see in this story, that everyone was touching Jesus. In fact, when Jesus asked the disciples who touched me, they, they sort of, you know, I don't know whether they are, they are having a, a bit of an attitude moment here. But they're saying to Jesus, what do you mean who touched you? That's not a logical question. Everyone, they say to him, is pressing around you. Many, many people were touching Jesus. But only one of the people in contact with Jesus is able to, to, to receive a miracle and an intervention in their life. And, and so I, I thought to myself, what does this mean? And this is my conclusion, that it wasn't just about her contact with Jesus, her proximity with Jesus. It wasn't just about the touch. It was about the attitude and the pers perspective behind the touch. 
And, and, and I see that that is captured. Her attitude and her thinking behind the touch is captured for us in verse 28, where it says, For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Mudeu, everyone was touching Jesus. Only Mudeu was touching Jesus with an attitude of expectation. Something will happen for me if I come into contact with Jesus. In fact, I don't even need to touch his hand. I don't need him to lay his hands on me. I don't need a big thing. I just even just his clothes. If I can just touch that, I don't know if it was today, maybe it would have been some denim. Maybe it would have been a nice jacket. I don't know what it would have been. I just need to touch his garment and I'm going to receive my healing. The reason Mudeu is able to obtain this miracle is because he, she didn't just touch Jesus. She touched him with an attitude of expectation. There are two powerful lessons that I see in Mudeu's life concerning how she gets to this place where she's able to have such a high quality of faith. She says her, her perspective is Jesus doesn't need to know I exist. He doesn't need to talk to me. He doesn't need to see me. He doesn't need to touch me with, you know, with his body. I just need to touch the, just, just a little contact with him and my prayers will be answered and my healing will come. How did this woman get there? I'm going to give you the two lessons that I see in this story, the two sort of secrets that I believe that, that we can learn from Mudeo's life and from her ability to obtain such a powerful miracle and such a beautiful ending to her story uh, as we read it in the book of Mark chapter 5. The first thing I see is this, that Mudeo was operating with faith. She was operating with faith. And the first thing that I believe that you and I need to do in order to grow to this place of, 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 of a faith that can intrude uh, and cause the power of God to break out into our lives is that we need to build our faith. That's the first thing that I see. We need to build our faith. You see, the Bible tells us why the woman is in the crowd trying to touch the hem of Jesus' garment, trying to touch his robe, trying to touch a small part of, of, of you know, even just the edge of his existence, just his clothes alone. The Bible tells us why she's trying to touch it. Listen to verse 27. It says, she had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. Do you know why Mudeu is there? Because she has heard about Jesus. You see, the word of God tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so faith comes by hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. This is the first thing we need to do. We need to place ourselves in places where we are hearing, 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 hearing the good news about Christ. You see, too many, too many of us spend too much time hearing all the wrong things. We invest too much of our capacity for understanding, hearing things that do not build our faith. This woman had been in places, I don't know where the places are, the Bible doesn't tell us the details, but she had heard about Jesus and her hearing had built up her faith to the place that she had the absolute certainty. I just need to touch the hem of his garment and I'm going to receive my healing. You need to build your faith. And we see here in this scripture and we see in Romans chapter 10 how you can build your faith so that it can grow to the place where it can obtain miracles uh, you know, or, or can cause miracles to break out into your life. You build your faith by engaging in the word of God. You need to be in places where you're hearing and hearing and hearing. Here at Mavuno this year, not just this year, but we have a rhythm of reading through the scriptures and we're reading through the New Testament this year. Maybe you haven't uh, you know, read it or maybe you're new to our community. So this isn't something you've interacted with. I want to invite you into a space of anchoring your life in the scriptures, hearing the good news about Christ. That's the thing that will build up your faith to the place where you're able to trust Jesus for a miracle like this woman who we are calling what they did. And so there, there's a way, how can you get, uh, you know, you can join the plan that we've been reading and it's a simple process. We're gonna make this as easy for you as possible. On, this, on your screen, you're gonna see a phone number and that uh, you need to text that number on WhatsApp so that you can be added to our WhatsApp community, the Mavuno Church WhatsApp community. And what we do is that every week at the beginning of the week, you'll receive the Bible readings for the week. Uh, we are using a plan, it's on 
a Bible app called YouVersion. Uh, the plan, uh, uh, it's a beautiful plan that just takes us through the New Testament from January uh, to December. And so we'll finish the New Testament in December. But if you didn't start in January, you can start from where we are. That's where you're able to receive weekly uh, the readings uh, for this week. If you, if you can, uh, you know, save that number, send a text on WhatsApp, you're going to be added to the WhatsApp community. And from there, you'll be able to receive the readings for the week ahead. Hey, start today. Start today. Uh, start today so that you can hear, you can hear, you can internalize the word of God and your faith can be strengthened uh, so that you can be able to trust God for impossible things. That, that the same information is also available on our website, uh, mavunochurch.org, mavunochurch.org. Uh, if you go onto our website every week, uh, you know, we, they put up the readings for the week. And again, you're able to plug into our readings uh, for the year and you can be anchored in God's word. You need to build your faith and the way that you're going to do that is by living a life where, you know, as a lifestyle, you're interacting with the scriptures, you're placing yourself in places of, you know, receiving the word of God, hearing the word of God, so that your faith can grow. And you can be like this woman who it says she had heard about Jesus, and so she was able to come to him with a high expectation, and she was able to receive a miracle of healing. So the first thing you need to do, is to build your faith and you build your faith by being in the word of god the second thing you need to do is to take faith aligned steps you need to take faith aligned steps Muzeu had heard about jesus she had heard about miracles he was doing she had heard that other people had been healed whatever stories she had heard the bible does tell us just says she had heard but she didn't rest at hearing do you know what she did next she took a step the Bible tells us that she thought to herself, if I just touch him, I will be healed. And so what did she do? She took the steps she needed to take until she got to the place of touching the hem of his garment so that she could be healed. She touched his robe. Listen, the disciples said to Jesus, everyone is pressing around you. How can you ask who is touching you? Muzeu is in that crowd. I suspect she was not at 100% strength. Why? She's been bleeding for 12 years. She's not well. She's not at her best physically, but she's committed to taking the steps it will take to break through the crowd to get to where her miracle is. You need to take faith steps. You need to take faith aligned steps. That faith that God has given you, that ability to trust him, that nothing is impossible with him, you then need to take the steps that get you to the place where you interact with him. And one of the most critical steps that I want to invite you to is the step of prayer and waiting on God. That's your faith step today. That's the faith, that, that's walking through the crowd. That's saying, Lord, I'm here waiting on you, trusting you to break through, trusting your power to break out in my life and intervene in my impossible situation. That, that's what it means to take faith steps. That's one practical faith step that you can take as you're trusting God for breakthrough, the kind of breakthrough that Mudeu was able to experience. As, as a rhythm here at Mavuno Church, every week, the Monday to Friday, we meet for morning prayers, uh, you know, a virtual prayer meeting from 4.30 to 5.30 in the morning, Monday to Friday. And part of what we've learned is that this has become for us a, a place of, of raising our faith, ex, uh, you know, increasing our expectation, trusting God for miraculous intervention. And they're going to put some links up. You can see a, a link up on your screen that can show you how to plug into our morning prayers and to enter into a place where you can trust God to do the impossible for you, even as he did uh, for this incredible woman that we are calling Mudeo. You need to have a lifestyle of personal prayer. That, that prayer meeting is communal prayer. You need to make personal prayer your lifestyle. You need to enter into a, you know, we have seasonal times of fasting and we'll communicate those. Our next, uh, you know, fast as a church community will be at the beginning of the month of September. You need to plug into those spaces so that you can make yourself available to have that encounter with God that you need so that you can touch his robe just as, uh, as Mudeu did, and you can weigh, open up your life to the power of God entering and bringing a divine intervention. Hey, as I bring our message to a close, I want us to trust God right this moment uh, for that intervention and for that breakthrough because I know that nothing is impossible with our God. Our God and our King, we thank you for this woman. We have given her a name, Mudeu. We, 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 we can see 
that she had such faith and that her faith bore incredible fruit and incredible results. I pray for someone listening to my voice. I pray for someone watching this in a place of immense suffering, in a place of pain, maybe a physical pain like what Mothel must have been experiencing, but maybe not physical, maybe disappointment, maybe sorrow, maybe grief, whatever it may be, oh God, maybe the, the pain of lack and poverty and financial distress. I thank you because nothing is impossible with you. And as I raise this prayer over them, I want to agree with them. This is our moment of squeezing through the crowd, stretching out our hand, trusting to, tra to touch your robe like this woman did. We are trusting for a breaking out of your power, entering into our lives to intervene in every impossible situation. We pray, our God and our King, for a powerful move of you, a powerful demonstration of your power to bring healing, to bring restoration, to bring acceleration, to deliver us in every place of pain and suffering to the glory and to the honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, Amen, amen, amen. Hey, thank you so, so much for joining us today. If you didn't get to watch our first installment of this Sermon series, uh, you know, you can catch that from last Sunday. Uh, but then you can also, we are looking forward to you joining us next Sunday as we bring our Sermon series to a close. God bless you and have a wonderful week ahead and see you next Sunday.